This episode of the Damage Guild podcast is sponsored by listeners like you. Join the guild at patreon.com slash damage guild to receive exclusive perks, member rewards, and bonus content. Previously on the Damage Guild podcast. I reach deep, deep down inside, both emotionally and in, in my pack, <laughs> and pull out the potion that I've been holding on to and drink a bottled sleep. You are fully refreshed. It's all coming back to me now. The sounds of battle fade into a quiet stillness, and there, hovering a few inches off the ground, you see a pale apparition of a man robed in ancient kingly garb. Sharkoth kneels, bowing his head as he removes the crown and proffers it to the ghost. Ooh. Great Emperor, I ask you to once again arise and take your seat upon the throne. Your devoted followers stand ready to do your bidding. What's left of them? The ghost watches, his face seemingly clouded over, and makes no move to respond. Forgive me, Your Majesty, for it appears your summoning is incomplete. I swear I will see to it that you once again have a body to inhabit. Sharkoth brandishes the scepter towards you. Tokus, writhing black tentacles burst out of the ground all around you. And this isn't magical, is it? Or it's not int. Con- yeah, it's I, my gnomish thing doesn't help, guys. He said he cast a spell. It's a sp- oh, but yeah, it's trying to grab it's you. It's only... Yeah, yeah. yeah. technically, uh, the saving throw doesn't come until the start of your turn. Uh, okay. okay. But you've got writhing black tentacles all around you. Ooh! Alindria stands back up, staggers to her feet, and starts moving towards the mage. Hmm. Maybe these tentacles won't actually matter at all, because she just... She has exactly enough movement to get there with her dash. <laughs> hmm. Can she attack after a dash? She can with cunning action. Yeah, mm. dog. So, yeah, she saves you. That was anticlimactic. So she rushes forward, <laughs> staggers to her feet, and reaches the mage, running him through with her flame tongue sword. Yeah, finally took him down. And yes, he collapses in a bloody pile by the throne. So the tentacles that were just about to grab at you pull themselves back into the floor and disappear. Oh, that is, that is scary. Ooh. That was a real deus ex machina moment. <laughs> well, it's just how it happened to work out, not blend. Okay, Tokus, it's your turn. Do I have enough movement to get to the throne? That's the question. Oh, wait, uh, Alendria needs to get healed at the start of her turn. She was blown out of the healing spirit. Ah, that's right. Well, but healing spirit can move. Yeah, yeah, it can move. What's the movement on it? 30 feet. I have to use a bonus action. But it has to move on his, on Shabba's turn. Yeah, on, on my turn. I see. Hmm. I mean, I still have that hex, so I guess I will move the hex to Sherikoth. Yeah, dog. All right, so I'm going to come up to the side of the throne of Altoria. Yeah. Near where Sherikoth is. And I will say to him, you have no idea how long... My name is Inigo Montoya. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sherikoth, we're going to kill you for your crimes against nomanity. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and uh, I will green flame axe at him. I will throw my axe at him. Here we go. Take that. No, but don't actually pick it up. That was a two. So I guess that misses. You got nervous in the presence of Sharakoth, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I just realized you couldn't actually get there because you were knocked prone. Oh, no. Um. Okay. Getting up from prone is five feet of my movement or ten? It's half your movement. Half my movement. So you have ten feet left. Okay. Let's bring you could reach back. the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to mess with him. He probably only has like 20 hit points, right? So Tokus gets up. And I'm going to move what little I can. Can I reach uh, the cultist that's not been knocked back into the corner with my uh, lightning lure? It's a 15 foot. 15 foot range. No, he's just out of range. Uh, I could choose him. So Tokus gets up. I'm going to move towards Sherikoth. Actually, wait a minute. Is he within range for lightning lure? He would be if you're willing to go up next to the emperor. Nope, don't do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to, like, praise him or anything. I don't believe in that stuff, but I am going to whip and snap. And just keep in mind, the Emperor is looking for a, a body to inhabit, so just bear that in mind. You try to pull him in, but it doesn't succeed. Uh, no! Ah, 
I'll get you. Uh, I will also, because it's a bonus action, why not? Actually, maybe instead of moving the hex, maybe I should just heal myself. I still have my second wind. I think I'm going to do that instead. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to heal myself for a d10 plus my fighter level. Magician, heal thyself. And I roll max. Sweet. That's fantastic. 19 health back. All right, uh, I guess I'm done. By the way, here's some cool artwork I found to use for Emperor. Oh, oh dear shnikes. That's what he looks like. Whoa. Wow. Got a great beard. It's very like um, the ghosts from uh, Return of the King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got that kind of vibe to it. To all our listeners, it's like a glowing bluish green crowned ghost dude. Yeah, three pronged crown with like a ghostly beard and a ghostly, ghostly sword. muscles. Yeah. A ghostly leg. Another ghostly leg. <laughs> I count at least two ghostly legs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in fairness, I'm not a suitable body for the emperor, right? He wouldn't. He wouldn't want to come back as a gnome. I mean, I think he'll take what he can get at this point. <laughs> <I'm> honest. <laughs> right. He's like he. He didn't even say anything back to Sharikov. That's how disappointed he is. <laughs> That's how disappointed the emperor is with. <laughs> The botched like, job. I can't even with you. <laughs> yeah, right like, I'm, I'm, I'm already out of patience with you. Yeah, I waited, like, hundreds and hundreds of years for this? Yeah, right. To be brought back from the dead. And he was, like, expecting, like, a legion of... Loyal followers. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, this is what they have. And he's got two half-beaten-to-death guys and a, a bunch of dead souls around him. So the one cultist that had been blown back into the corner stands up and moves towards Sharkath. Actually, he interposes himself between Tokus and his leader. To the last. Your loyalty will do you nothing <laughs> in the end. You'll just be another body. But but at least this guy's soul's not going to get sucked into the Emperor, hopefully. <laughs> so that's a positive. He would probably consider it a privilege. As a tier term. All right. Well, with all of my spell slots restored, I think the time is now for Ralophim's Psychic Lens. Yo. At the old Sharakoth. And fortunately, I know his name, too. So I utter his name and range under <laughs> 20 feet. He makes an intelligence save. You might be good at those. You know what they say. Share and share a cough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if he's good at those saves, that's still... You have, like, a ridiculous modifier, Brian. <laughs> he makes his saving throw. Aw, oh, man. Well, shucks. Bummer. Isn't that still half damage, though? Yeah. 76 half damage. All right, 6 plus 4, plus four is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 5 is 20, plus 5 is 25. Good rules. Plus 5 is 30, plus 4 is 34. Wow. You didn't roll <laughs> anything was... below a 4. <laughs> below a 4, nice. yes. Yeah. 34 into 2. Not bad. He saved for half. Man, imagine if he hadn't had the save for half. 16. Yeah, all right. 17 damage. 17. Uh, what's the range on Bardic? On Bardic Inspiration, I think it's 60 feet... Yeah, 60 feet. I'd love one of those. You want one of those? No, you're 65 feet away. Uh, <laughs> yeah, come, come, come a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will scoot just a little bit closer. I think I'm still going to hang out by this uh, back left pillar. <laughs> well, you could duck behind the pillar after you tell me I'm beautiful. Yeah. That's true. That's true. As well as the Oprah Winfrey of Bardics. <laughs> That's right. You get a Bardic. You get a Bardic. <laughs> All right, so you move up behind the pillar, peek around the corner, and inspire your ally? Yeah, and I will look at you, Tokus, and I will say, if you're ever having trouble laughing at yourself, let me know, and I'll do it for you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I feel so inspired. (laughs) Good, I'm glad. And that ends my turn. Friends are willing to do anything for you. (laughs) That's right. That's how you know they're a true friend. I was going to say, Tokus... You pale in comparison to the Emperor. And he's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I have a D8 to do stuff with. Captain Clapton's turn. He stands up and hobbles over towards one of the pillars closer to the throne. And he's just going to catch his breath there, hiding behind it for now. <laughs> Yar, these old sea legs aren't like what they used to be. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't even need to voice them anymore. You guys just do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it'll be in the next campaign too. Like there'll be there'll be characters that we fall in love with so much that we want to keep giving them one liners. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can't wait. Took us Lindria and Captain Clapton make charisma saves. You can get your advantage on that. Well, I have a minus one to my charisma saving throws. I got a 12. But can you add bardics to saving throws? Yes, you can. I think you can. So I'm going to do that because that could change it, right? Yep. Ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Yeah, I'm going to do that before we get the, the lowdown. I... I promise I'm not searching your face, Thane. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this die before I have any inclination as to if that was good or not. I rolled a one on the Bardic. Nice. Uh yep. Thirteen is not high enough, unfortunately. You feel a wave of gloom wash over you. <laughs> kind of feels like that bad energy you get from the crystal. <laughs> In game terms, you have Bane, so you subtract a d4 from all attack rolls or saving throws. Oh, no. Goodness. That was the Emperor or Sharakoth? This was Sharakoth, who casts it from standing right in front of the throne. Oh. And he also extends his scepter, and he conjures a wave of incredible heat. And he's going to hit Alindria with it. Because she's the closest to going down and one of the bigger threats. Alindria makes a saving throw, but she still takes damage. You see the wavy lines that you see above the pavement and stuff. Those rise up, fill the air around Alindria, and then she just looks drowsy for a second and collapses to the ground. Uh, Oh, no. This might be okay. Uh, you still have the healing spirit, yep. and it should be able to leap to her. Yes, indeed. Healing spirit from Kavaki himself. Shaba? All right. First of all, just to raise your hackles, Sean, I'm going to remark that I can't help but notice that the Emperor and Sharakoth are perfectly lined up for a lightning shot. But mm. I'm not going to do that. Are you saying that just to make me feel bad and for me to remind you of the percentage (laughs) that the bow would actually disintegrate uh yes and no i'm saying that to remind you that you are correct and that i should have brought a backup bow in case this one uh fell to ash because that would have made (laughs) this decision a lot easier so first as a bonus well i'm going to move out from behind the door into the room by the left back pillar on the other side of where Aslo is. I'm going to, as a bonus action, move the Kavaki healing spirit over to Alendria's space. Okay. And I am then going to... I think I want to just target Sherikoth, right? I, I just want to unleash, just unload all my attacks on Sherikoth. I don't even know if the Emperor is susceptible to attack, so... now nah, he, he he's a ghost. Yeah. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> well, yeah, you do have a magical bow. I mean, but... Sherikov is like the Emperor is not actively fighting us. Mm-hmm. He's looking for a body. Sherikov could be that body. That's true. I bet Sherikov doesn't want to be the body, but Sherikov might be the body that the Emperor wants. Could be. Powerful human caster body. That seems pretty good. Not a bad deal, I would say. So it's one of those things where, like, maybe if we can hurt the Emperor, maybe we should consider it, but also Sherikov's the one actively hurting us right now. Right. What would Shaba do? Yeah, I think Sherikov is the uh, is the right play here. So I am going to begin attacking, begin shooting Sherikov. Now, does he have cover behind his guy from where I am? Yes. Okay. He specifically stood there to grant cover. All right. Then maybe... Mm-hmm. Well, I've moved out exactly 30 feet from behind the door, so since my movement is doubled, I can still get back there if I need to or want to after this. So, I would say you could, you could take out the other cultist that's in front of him. Yeah, I'll, I'll target the other cultist with my first shot here. That's going to be a 19 to hit. And I don't think I want to waste my Colossus Slayer on this guy. I'm going to try to just kill him outright. Uh, that's only six damage. That's exactly enough. <laughs> All right. Phew. Okay. Targeting Sharkoth with the next... Uh, that's a 25 to hit. Hits. Okay. For 11 damage. Is that with the Colossus die? No, he's still at full health. I think he got hit earlier. Yeah, he got hit. Oh, he did. Okay. Well, then, yeah, I might as well go ahead and use it. 
in case I miss next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aslo hit him with the psychic lance. That's true. Okay, so that's an extra two. So 13 damage total from that attack. And then for my hasted extra attack, I'll target him again. And that's a 22 to hit this time. Shab is a real formidable combatant with the haste. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. And that's minimum damage, five. And then I'm going to go ahead and tuck myself right back into my little hidey hole behind the door. <laughs> you still have your interact action. You could you could hide behind the door again. And that'll end my turn. There's no shame in those kinds of tactics when you're playing an archer. Yeah, and when you're playing against Sharikov, either. Even if I wasn't an archer. Shaba, your cowardice will be safe with us. <laughs> <laughs> when we tell the king how this fight went down, we're not going to talk about how you needed to use the door and hide behind it. I mean, I don't know if you've been noticing every combat that we've ever... Uh, had in this entire campaign, but I've been this way pretty much since the beginning, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Yeah, the the shadow that wanders the glade. That's right. The shadow that hides in the glade. <laughs> and, like, Goliaths have a different sense of, like, not like, like, you know, maybe like a human army would be offended by those kinds of tactics, but I mean, aren't you guys naturally, like, tribal and guerrilla tactics? Um, yeah, let's go with that. Shadow who hides from big scary monsters in the glade is just is fine by me. So you go back and hide behind the door again. At this point, you start to notice a strange darkness in the room. Oh no. The magic circle seems to still be casting its light, but it's like something is deadening it, giving everything an oddly washed out, desaturated look. Hmm. Then you see a shadowy shape beginning to materialize around the apparition, rising from the circle and looming above the battle. It hasn't taken on any discernible form, but you can sense an evil intelligence within it. Oof. At the same time, you realize the ghostly emperor is beginning to look less ghostly, his body only vaguely translucent now. What? What? What is happening? What the world? So it's like it's like the emperor's body and his spirit or something? Something? I don't know. Wispy tendrils reach out from the shadow, grasping at the bodies of the fallen cultists around it. As it connects, the bodies begin to shift... And rise up. Oh, no. Their eyes lifeless. They raise their weapons and lurch forward haltingly. Macabre puppets of an evil force. Oh, oh no. <laughs> what the heck? Which one of us has the um, scroll of Repel Undead? Protection. From that would be... Is that you, Shaba? Me, I think. Oh, yeah. Is it a whole action, though, to cast that? I'm sure. Probably. Yeah. It might stop them from getting to you. Using an action to read the scroll encloses you in an invisible barrier that extends from you to form a 5 foot radius, 10 foot high cylinder. For 5 minutes this barrier prevents undead from entering or affecting anything within the cylinder. So like you can sit there in it, but like you can't move into them or else they kind of get inside it. I think that's what I remember of our discussion about it. Oh, you can't move? The cylinder doesn't go with you? Well, it does. Cylinder moves with you and remains centered on you. However, if you move in such a way that an undead would be inside the cylinder, the effect ends. So you, again, you can't move into them, but you can just stay where you are, which is perfect yeah, for it just, an archer, it, actually. Exactly. It just it didn't work for Tokus, but it would work for you or Aslo. And you, you still have a turn, even if you were to activate the scroll. You still have move and right. the haste. Right, because of the haste. Action. Yeah, true. So three of them, the three closest ones to the emperor... Rise up, and in the meantime, it's Elindria's turn. You heal her with their spirit? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, come on. Anything but a one, please. That's a two. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. Good Wish stuff. granted. <laughs> Kabaki's like, little one, you keep falling in battle. <laughs> Why don't you trust me? How is your faith in me so thin? She gets up and staggers out of the heat. Closes the distance with Sharkoth and attacks. Sharkoth throws up a magical shield to block her attacks, deflecting all of them. Whew. Boy, oh boy. Tokus. Okay, so he's got an active shield. He's got Bane active. Sheesh. These Zombronis, maybe I should just try. I mean, I do have extra attack, so I could try to just kill this guy and then move to Sher. Like, see if he dies from one attack and then move to Sharkoth. Then I don't have to take. An opportunity attack. It's risky, but... I mean, like, extra attack, I'm pretty sure you can break it up, so I think I could attack and then move on. But, I, I mean, I think regardless, my to-hit is affected, right? I'm, I'm currently baned. Yeah. 
So it's a minus D4. Okay. I'm going to try to kill this guy. Oh, do I also roll the D4 or do you roll it? You can roll it. Okay. Well, I rolled low on the D4 as well. I rolled a one, but I only rolled a six on my die. So with my butt... Oh, well, it's a zombie though. Maybe, maybe it's got a low AC. Okay. So would a 15 hit? 15 does hit. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. All right. So that's going to be six physical, but it's magical, and five poison from the axe. You raise your axe, you swing at it, and you lop off part of one of its arms, and you see that like its forearm falls to the floor, but then the shadows reach out from around it and pull it back up to hang it nearby. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> what? So it just kind of reassembled it. It's still broken apart. There's a, just a gap where uh. its elbow was. Well, did I slice off the arm that had the weapon? That's what I want to know. <laughs> um, this one was the priest that was casting the ritual, so it wasn't holding a weapon at the time. Oh, okay. So I, I this whole time, I wouldn't have... If I had moved away, it probably wouldn't have fit me, right? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's wearing weapons, but he didn't have it in hand. Gotcha. Okay, well, we're learning about the zombs. So don't fight the zombs. They just reassemble us. Yeah, we got to focus yeah. Sharakoth. Like, no doubt. Yeah. Yep. This thrilling and climactic combat encounter will continue in just a moment, but first, it's time for another royal decree. This one comes to us from Hartley Yosa, and it's dedicated to, well, us. It goes a little something like this. Hear ye, hear ye. Overlord of the Universe, Hartley Yosa, sends his thanks to Thane, Tokus Sean, Shabba Jay, and Aslo Brian. Your efforts on the podcast have inspired many to delve into TTRPGs. As we wrap up after an incredible three years, it's clear this journey has been profound. Personally, I've learned D&D 5e by listening to your adventures, watching characters evolve from humble beginnings in a closet to a formidable team combating the cult's evils. Jay taught me to defy character stereotypes, demonstrating even a weak ranger can deliver staggering damage. Sean showed the value of reflavoring, integrating the Eldritch Knight with in-game events. Brian, your knack for crafting intricate backstories filled with secrets, is enlightening. And Thane, your DM style, serious yet open to fun, is unparalleled. Good luck with your new Pathfinder venture I'll be eagerly following. May the Ramlord's shoulder be ever at your back. And remember, cereal isn't a soup, it's a sandwich. Well, thanks, Hartley. That's a heartwarming sentiment from someone who we know has been a big supporter of the show, a big fan. And uh, we appreciate your kind words. And we are very much nostalgic about things... Um, shortly coming to an end with this campaign, but we've got lots more in store, many great adventures and great times to come. So be sure to stick with us. And thanks again, Hartley. We appreciate you. So I'm going to flank. I'm going to move over and I'm going to flank with Elendria. Elendria to the end. Let's take him down. To the very last. Yeah. And I'm going to attack. Well, that was a one. That was not much better. And let's roll the d4 for the bane. All right, so 14 to hit, and I don't have Bardic, so I'm assuming that misses. 14 misses. Oh, uh, I should have done this before, but I will move the Hex to Sherikoth. Okay. And I think that's my turn. Have you been making concentration checks for any damage you're taking? Yeah. I mean, I, I've blocked a lot of different things, but the, the times that I actually was hit, I did do concentration checks. Um, I don't tend to fail them because... Uh, as a fighter, I get my proficiency bonus to those. I, I mean, I do fail my concentration from time to time, but yeah. I think I have to roll a three or less because I have a plus six. Wow, that's sweet. All right, well, the three zombies that arose split up. One of them goes after Captain Clapton and hits. One of them goes after Elindria and misses. One of them goes after Tokus and critically hits. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. Uh, guys, I do have a final level one spell slot. Should I just use it? I already told you he critically hits, so... Oh, you already told me it's a crit. That's true. No, it's okay. Alright, bring the damage. He only has a dagger on him, so he deals seven points of damage. Okay. 
This is where I lose the hex guys right here because I was just saying how I don't tend to fail these checks. Uh, I didn't. I didn't fail though. Uh, so seven points. Okay. And Captain Clapton is grazed by the other guy, Eslo. All right. You know what time it is. Uh, Sharkoth, make an intelligence save. <laughs> that is a success. Ah oh, man. Shucks. Lamo, I still rolled well. Six plus six is twelve. Plus six is eighteen. Wow. Plus five is twenty-three. Plus four is twenty-seven. Plus one is twenty-eight. Not too shabby. Then I will step out from behind the pillar a little bit just to get within range of Tokus and give you another party inspiration. Thanks, buddy. I need all the praise I can get. Yeah. <laughs> so this ain't looking so good. I, I imagined this a little differently in Tokus's head. Like, an infinitely resurrecting zombie army was not... Not part of the plan. ...what I thought this was going to be. So are you done with your turn, then? I'm trying to decide where I want to move, but I think I'll just go back behind the pillar. Okay. Hey, you use use the cover on the battlefield, you know? That's it. Tactics. Team tactics. Uh, Captain Clapton did not see your previous engagement with the zombie, so he is fruitlessly attacking it and missing. Is there anything we can do about these zombies? Something's controlling them? Uh, it's probably the Emperor, right? I thought it was the Emperor, yeah. Or the Emperor's soul spirit thing? Yeah, like... Is it like a race against time, like we have to kill the Emperor before he materializes or something? Or do we need to stop Sherikov? It's hard to say. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. We'll cross that bridge. Well, we definitely need to sh- <laughs> we need definitely need to stop Sherikov. There's no doubt about that. Or is his his role in this done now? Like is it unstoppable like he said and we need to I don't know. Well, it's yeah, it, it's hard to say, Brian. Like I don't think we have the means to switch over to killing the Emperor until Sherikov's done, right? I mean, like, if we switch now, he just gets to free cast spells on us. Like, I, yeah, I should stay next true. to him at least. I do have the Mage Slayer thing. Yeah, it feels like we're close to taking him down. Yeah, I think so, too. Sherikov pulls out his long sword, trying the weapon for the first time. He is going to stab the cultist zombie that's right in front of him. What? Oh, weird. What, what is happening right now? <laughs> As he does so, you see dark energy flowing through his sword from the zombie to him and his wounds begin to close. Is he casting? What? Is this like an effect of the sword or is he casting a spell? Uh, it's not a spell. Oh no. Okay. Some kind of vampiric touch effect. And then he turns his scepter on Tokus. His sword probably does that. The best one against you is probably thunderstorm so make a dexterity save i can use my reaction to attack him right if he's casting a spell mm. this is also not a spell because it's from his staff it's just a activating the magic item no really mm. all right so it's not considered casting a spell i see i see um i do have advantage on saving throws against spells cast by creatures within five feet but you're saying it's not it's a magic effect but it's not a spell it's not a spell Okay. All right, so what's happening to me? Uh, make a dexterity save. Dex save. As lightning and rain starts to flash all around you, see if you can remain standing. Oh, that's pretty good. I rolled a 19 on the die. What kind of a save is this? Dex. So that's a pass. So that should be a pass, yes. Okay, he takes seven points of damage. That's it. Okay, and I'll roll my concentration. Uh, that's a pass, and I take seven. Shabba's turn. Well, as fortune would have it, when you enter a custom item into... D&D Beyond, you can't always enter it as the type of item that you want it to be, because it's kind of limited. So it turns out when I entered the Bandit's Bow of Bolts, I just entered it as a custom item and not actually a bow. So it appears as though I do in fact have both a regular longbow and (laughs) my Bandit's Bow of Bolts. Which means... That if, theoretically, I were to use my third and final lightning shot and the 5% catastrophe did occur... It it is a 5% catastrophe. I would still have a bow to shoot. Mm. So I think, given that, I feel like a lightning shot through the Emperor into Sharakoth may be the play here. That is the right play, for sure. It's the coolest lightning arrow that you could possibly do <laughs> at the end of the show, right? It hits three enemies. Yeah. It's super iconic. It's very Shaba. Yeah, that's true. And, 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 if the bow crumbles, also awesome. 
<laughs> that is, that's fair. But then you would be without a magic weapon fighting this ghostly emperor. But yes, I, I like but the hashtag risk. Hashtag worth it. Right. I I like it. Is there anything you can do to gain advantage on yes, that? Yes, there is. But my question is: Is Alendria still in the same spot where the Kavaki healing spirit is? She hasn't moved since last turn, right? No, she had to move up to get out of the heat. Cripes. So then I can either use my bonus action to move the healing spirit into place, or I can use it to rub the lucky rabbit's foot. <laughs> well, couldn't you even just use the shadow armor? What do you mean? You're hidden right now. I mean, you're... That's a you're... bonus action to hide, too. It's a bonus action to hide as well. Yeah, but why, why use up the rabbit's foot when your armor gives you the advantage? That's fair. That's true. Yeah, because you might, you might need it later. Yeah. Because he has the uh, rabbit's foot on a harmonica holder, so he can just go like this. <laughs> That's right. And rub his face on it. Well, no, I, I get that you usually have the rabbit's foot on your mind for your lightning bow, but we're finally in a dimly lit cavern where your Drake shadow armor is awesome. That's true. All and right. Why not just get the advantage you've been waiting for? Okay, so then it's either make a stealth check with my bonus action or move the healing spirit with my bonus action. I mean, she's not down. Yeah, Lindra is still standing. He didn't attack her this time. Okay. I feel like that spell is just excellent for popcorn healing. I, I don't know if like giving her some healing right now really matters. Okay. That's true, too. Yeah. All we right. just really want you to blast him, Jay. Yeah. I mean, I just you have been trying to get me to use the third charge of this bow since the day I got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now you finally get your wish. I mean, it's a ninety-five percent chance that it doesn't <laughs> right. crumble. No, no. True. You, true. I think true, you true. did use the third shot before. I think we've been in another One dire time. spot yeah. where you considered okay, it that's, and that's actually fair. did it. All right. So I will kick the door open, <laughs> assuming that it swings inward. If not, this is going to be really awkward. <laughs> well, but, well, you. You hide first, right? Well, first I kick the door open, then I hide, because I don't want to hide and no, then, then kick, because that would be a loud noise <laughs> that might give me away. So I kick the door open, then I'm going to hide. <laughs> and it's going to be, that's going to be an 18 to hide. Okay. And then since I can't give a monologue because I'm hidden, I will silently say to myself, I'm Shaba, born of Crag and Thunder, son of Pachaka, last of the Dabadea clan, exile of the tribe of Rakshan, <laughs> and I swear you the solemn vow. You have offered me great offense, and you shall not outlive this day. And then I lift the bow and summon the lightning of the Ram Lord. And I don't know how I'm remaining hidden while there's lightning crackling <laughs> around my form. <laughs> Yet somehow, by the rules of the game, I will triumph in this action. <laughs> and I will target Sharakoth, and for one last time, I will release the arrow of Kavaki's mighty, mighty lightning. This could be the last arrow. And those rolls are terrible. <laughs> they are <laughs> awful. So I'm going to definitely use my bardic. Yeah, bar definitely bardic. Definitely the bardic. I was going to save it for the damage, but we need to hit here. Oh, I rolled max on the bardic. Boom. So that's nice. a, that makes it a 24 to hit. That hits. All right. Now let's get some <laughs> damage dice going here. Wait, when do you roll if it crumples? Uh, now. <laughs> well, I guess after the damage happens. Okay, yeah. We're on, we're on a roller coaster of emotions with this attack. Yeah. <laughs> so how much damage do I take? I take two from the kickback. Ooh, doesn't that stop your concentration potentially on the spirit? Yep, it sure does. That's okay. We, we didn't think about that. We'll get to that in time. So, against Sharikoth, I have my Colossus Slayer D8. I have my normal D8 and my four lightnings. 22, 23, 26, 31 total on Sharikoth, of which 15 is lightning. So you unleash your lightning. It streaks through the room, striking Sharikoth square in the shoulder. He's taken aback for a moment as the lightning wreaths his body. It almost seems like an extension of the storm happening right next to him. And at the same time, you see the lightning kind of snaking its way into the shadowy form that's over the Emperor as well. Hmm. So it kind of like, it doesn't actually hit the Emperor himself like the ghostly form, but it's hitting that negative, that evil energy. Seems like it. Okay, what about the Zombroni in front of Sharikoth? Hmm. It strikes it, but it doesn't seem to have any lasting effect. Hmm. Mm, weird. Okay. Well, at least we know that mass that's theoretically going to be the body 
can be touched by lightning. But now we have no more lightning. Right. And I have two d20s to roll. I have one for my con check and one to see if the bow disintegrates. But the matter in which you choose to roll them matters. Because what if one of them is that one? That one. Well, I'm going to do the con check first for the healing spirit. And that is going to be a natural 20. Nice. Oh, but that could have been your boat. <laughs> That's terrible because that means that statistically speaking, <laughs> this next one will be a one. The next thing I'm likely to roll is a natural one. So here we go. That's how statistics work. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> What's great is if you do, you're, I feel like all your anger is going to come my way if your bow crumples. All my anger will, will come Kavaki's way because he was clearly too strong with the bow and that was why it broke. You know what to do, Jay. You have to kiss the die before you roll it. That's what gives it good luck. Here goes nothing. Oh, he really did kiss it. To see if the bow crumbles. I actually <laughs> did. It's kind of metallic. <laughs> All right, here we go. The result of the die is... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Roll, please. Is it really? Is it really? <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a nine. Okay, it's, it's a <laughs> that nine. Is a nine. The dramatic buildup. He was slow rolling us. <laughs> he was showing us on his camera. I was like, yes, it's the one. Oh, wait, no. No, it's the one. <laughs> I don't know what to feel anymore. You hate my bow as much as you hate Stripey. It's clear. <laughs> no, no. I want you to keep it. He has to have something to hate about your character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The Stripey gone. All right, so the bow survives. The bow manages <gasps> survival. And I still have two more attacks. How great is this? I think we care more about the survival of this bow than we do about any of our other party members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fair. So would Shirkoth have cover, though, if you tried to shoot him? Yeah. Yes. So I need to get into a position where he doesn't have as much cover. Well, I mean, he's surrounded by people. He's got cover from all angles. But does he have less cover if I get at an angle to him than if I shoot him straight on? Or is it the same? No, it, it would be the same. Okay, then I'll just stay where I am. What about shooting the mass floating over the Emperor's ghost? I want to focus Sharkoth until he's dead. I think that's our best play. Well, yeah, that's true. So if it's all the same, if I'm where I'm at behind the door, or if I move in far into the room, then I'll just stay where I'm at and shoot, tar- shoot Sharkoth again. So, um, that's a 17 to hit. That hits. Okay, for 10 that time. And then final shot of the turn. That's a 26 to hit for eight more damage. Oh, this might be it. He's got the three arrows stuck in him. He is still defiantly standing. Ah. Uh, like Boromir. Yes. Blast. Holding out his scepter and sword. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm done. The shadow over the Emperor starts to condense into a more solid form. It still hasn't taken on any real shape yet. It's just kind of this black mass with the tendrils. They reach out and grab a couple of the other cultists that are nearby. Oh boy. And bring them back up. Yikes. The purple of the magic circle is starting to fade away and become more and more gray. Kind of this weird ghostly gray light. Mm. Lindria. Will she be the one to kill (laughs) Shadokov? Take him down, Alendria. You can do this. You must do this. You will do this. Drive it right through his heart. And he shields again against her attacks. Uh, this guy's got everything. He's got the scepter. Dude. He's got a long sword that, like, sucks out and heals from zombies. He's got a shield. Except he did put the crown down on the throne. Yeah, he doesn't have the crown. Oh, I should have grabbed it. Tossed it to Aslo. With the shield, Galindra just barely misses all three attacks. Oh, Crap. Tokus? Come on, Tokus. Hmm. Take him down. Yeah, I'm going to try. I, I moved my hex to him, didn't I, earlier? It is time, Shirakoth, for you to pay for your crimes with your blood. Good thing I have flanking. That was a one I just rolled. Okay. Crit. Oh, crit. Yeah. Oh, crit. Woo. Crit. Natty Twanzoni. Did you pull out your poisoned sword? For this? No, I didn't. You can attack with that if you want. It's just... Dude, you're, you have a poisoned rapier, BT dubs. BT schlubs, Tokus. I thought that was supposed <laughs> to be your first attack against him, right? It was. It was. I totally, totes forgot. Well, also, I didn't really get to him until... Till a moment ago. I think I should save it. I think I can kill him just with this crit, guys. Why would you save it? What better <laughs> target do you have to save it for? Well, no, if the Emperor Ritual we can't stop... 
He's going to be a person. Then you're going to use it on the Emperor. And then I'm going to use it on the Emperor. All right. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Why, why overkill Sherikoth when I can save it? He is pretty beat up. Okay. So that is 19 physical from the magic weapon. And wow. then four necrotic and three poison total. Solid. 26 damage. Of varying types. <laughs> so you strike him hard and... It gets past not only the shield that he just put up to defend himself, but also it breaks his own personal barrier that both he and the two casters apparently had on. Ah, mm. so it shatters. Ah. Yes, his, his body armor of magic shatters, and he remains alive. Wow. I will strike him down. <laughs> this time, I'm going to make it a green flame axe attack. This time, I mean business. <laughs> Okay, does a 25? Yeah, 25 would hit him, Mm -hmm. for sure. With one final flaming axe, you strike straight across his chest, leaving a deep gash. Sharkath falls to his knees, clutching at his heart. My, My emperor, I have failed you. He collapses to the floor in a heap. Eyes still open. Yes! <laughs> yes! yes! Dude. <laughs> uh, a wave of relief begins to flow over Tokus as he realizes the leader of the cult lays dying at his feet. Don't forget to mark that on your resume. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one goes under or over Dragon Slayer, right? Um, evil cult leader yeah, slayer. Over. Yeah, I would say I would say that's more recent experience. <laughs> yeah, so that goes first. Recent career experience, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll put that at the top. Killing evil diabolical cult leader bent on taking over the world. Yeah, and Tokus <laughs> wonders: Is this the most satisfied he'll feel mm. within this whole revenge arc? Anything else? Um, I don't think I should move because I probably would incur reactions from the zombs, and I'm not quite sure what we're doing yet with the whole tentacle thing. For you, Tokus, I mean, killing Sharakoth, you can literally just take out your bucket list and crumple it up and toss it in the garbage. Just toss it. I yep. mean, that pretty much takes care of it all, right? Mm, I'll crumple it, toss it, and then remember that the Towers of Arconomica was on my bucket mm, list, so fair. Mm-hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna grab that list right back. Also, Vacation to the Isles of the Dawn. Yeah, never mind, there's too much. Too much remaining to be done. We have so much life still to live, Shaba. Mm, so Hwag and Wife, it's it's not on there, but it's pending. But it's on there. <laughs> well, no, I like yeah. I, f- I flip it over, and then I see in Shaba's handwriting, it mentions the Hwag and Wife. It's an invisible ink. Yeah, invisible ink. And then, like, in parentheses, P.S., hey, like, don't forget to invite me to your wedding. <laughs> right. With love, Shaba. Yeah, it's all, I wrote that all in lemon juice. The cultist puppets are still attacking you relentlessly. Uh, they've divided themselves amongst the four of you that are still in the room, and Alindria is brought down by one. Mm. Another one approaches Aslo, and it hits you for six points. Ouchies. Aslo? I hate zombies. We're going to die to this never-ending zombie horde. All right. Well, I was planning to just psychic lance Sharakoth again, but Togus took care of that for me. I mean, in fairness, like, he was kind of my nemesis first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. That's true. That is fair. And this is, like, sort of poetic justice for all the times that Stripey kill steeled stuff from you, so. Mm. Mm. True. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I wouldn't take killing Felmendar from you if we were to find him again. Aw, thanks, buddy. <laughs> so, I think I try to psychic lance the Emperor now, question mark? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that... Well, hang on. Are they two separate targets? I've been confused about this. So let me describe it a little bit better. Now that your focus is cleared from Sharikoth, the Ghost of the Emperor is somewhat more solid than it was before. It's still not completely solidified. The Emperor himself still has kind of this almost blank expression, but it looks like his face is shadowy, like he's not fully even thinking and observing everything, really. Mm. Um, This shadow is pluming above him, this shadowy mist, and it's hovering over his head. He's in a little personal rain cloud. Down through him into the magic circle, and then has tendrils reaching out to the zombies. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think it's tough to say. Like, what is it? We saw a little bit of residual lightning course through it from the bow, but we don't know if it hurt it at all, you know? So I, I wonder if this is like, while we're 
in the middle of things, like maybe this is a time to like recoup, like get Alendria up, or uh, maybe you could do some defensive spells. Do you 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 got stuff like uh, invisibility or? Uh, mirror image. Mirror image yeah. There's, you've got you've got so many options. I just I don't know if you would target the cloud or the emperor. Yeah, you know is the problem, right? Like what we don't know what we're trying to hit, and then the arrow just went through the emperor. But it seems to be one target. It seems to be. It seems like it's one thing almost. Well, but I don't think the ritual's complete. Yeah. So what is this evil energy? Is it the ritual itself? Is it the magic surrounding the ritual? I think that's what we. There was an evil intelligence to that black mist that seems mm. distinct from the the kind of mindless emperor. Okay. Right. So then I think I attack the mist. Yeah, you attack the evil. But maybe until we've confirmed that it's hittable, maybe we shouldn't blow through s- spell slots? Well, the lightning did hit it. We didn't know if it damaged it, but the lightning did course through it. We don't know if it damaged it. That's that's what I'm getting at. Like, that could have just been flavor. Well, but it didn't hit the Emperor. It went right through the Emperor. Right. It went through the Emperor, so I like not targeting the Emperor, but this isn't necessarily one of those times where it's like, oh, well, we couldn't target the Emperor, therefore let's target this other ethereal we're not sure if we can touch it thing. Well, the evil intelligence is what's contr- is what's puppeting the zombies through the, the tendrils. So we can only assume right. that it's the hive mind that's controlling them. Couldn't we use some test attacks to prove whether or not it's damageable? Yeah, you want me to try Eldritch Blast instead? I, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else in Brian's kit that could tell us, give us some information. That would be... Uh, what is that? Force damage. Force damage. Try it. Is it worth a try? And then your other choice is mental damage. It is one of the most reliable damage types. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, force is really good. All right, let's try that. So two beams. I'm just thinking ahead of time. Like, we could be facing the Emperor fully resurrected in a moment here, and it's like, Mm. why, why waste resources on this, like, earlier phase that might not be relevant? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Eldritch Blast. And if we knew it would stop the transformation, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Jay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's enough that it's controlling the zombies. Uh, I mean, I think the evil intelligence is somehow part of the ritual, and if we can stop that, then we can stop the rest of what's happening to the Emperor. Mm-hmm. So does a 14 hit? It strikes the cloud, but it doesn't really seem like it has any noticeable effect. Like, the lightning kind of ran through it and it trickled up along, but you didn't see the cloud react in any way to it. Same thing with the Eldritch Blast. It mm. hits it, but it doesn't really react to that. Okay. So it doesn't seem to even matter what my damage roll was, in other words. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the the, bla- the the Eldritch Blast went straight through the cloud. It hit it, but it didn't damage it, is what's happening. What it yeah. seems like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Then I... Th- guess i'm done should we like start to run because (laughs) there's nothing we can do to this thing i think we set up there's the scepter to grab there's sharkoth's sword sharkoth's sword which was like yeah of zombie life stealing alendria needs to pick that up it's vampiric and she can just stab the zombies and heal herself yeah once if she's if she resurrects one of us could try to recommend that to her i mean she's not conscious for us to chat with her this moment. All right, well then why don't I start running over... Uh, could you bardic somebody, maybe? I could. Why don't I start running over around the edge of the room toward Alendria? I can potentially heal her, I can potentially grab the crown or whatever. Yeah. So I think I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, it'd be cool to chuck the crown to you. I could try. Uh, the one that you're running away from hits you for six. For six, okay. These zombies aren't that strong. I think we can hold out until we know what to do. I will uh, give Tokus a bardic inspiration as well as I run between pillars. Thanks, pal. Yeah. Careful, though. Don't don't hurt yourself. Can everyone can make an arcana check. Mm. All righty. That was a natural four for me. Uh, that was a natural one. Oh, great. You're our arcana person, Tokus. I know. <laughs> well, I got an 11 total. Five. Okay, then. I can make a perception check <laughs> and do really good. Do you want me to make a persuasion check? <laughs> I'll just leave it that Captain Clapton sees that these zombies cannot be defeated at the moment. He's going to disengage maneuvers around the column away from his zombies and closer towards the Emperor. He says, we have to do something to bring that down. What's sustaining it? If we can't hit it, then what can we do? 
Shaba, it's your turn. If we can't hit it, then what can we do? Tokus? What was the ritual? It wasn't just the souls, right? It was the casting, and it was the artifacts coming together. Dude. I mean, like, if we moved one of the artifacts into the interdimension Satch. This is an evil intelligence. Is it a god? Oh. Because it could be a god. You know, th- this world has many gods in it, and not all of them are good. And they do have direct interaction or the ability to directly interact with humanity. So if this is a divine power, then that is likely what is what they are sacrificing those souls to in order to make this ritual, you know, complete. Did we try hitting the... No, 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 no. No, hit, hit is not in our vocabulary anymore. Captain Clavin just said, if we can't hit it, what else can we do? What else can we do that doesn't involve attack rolls or damaging this? This is a god. How, what, what can we do to appease the god so that it doesn't want to do this anymore? Feed it more souls? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the only souls left in the room are ours. Yeah, uh, that's true. All right, Tokus, you volunteer as tribute. Um, <laughs> I don't think we're at that point yet. I will say at one point in the dialogue, Thane mentioned that the emperor looked more like he wasn't ghostly anymore. Right. Like he becoming more physical. Yeah. Yeah. You have lots of attacks in a turn. Couldn't you like poke him with your not action? Couldn't you poke him with your uh, haste shot just to see if a magic bow affects the... Well, that's what I was going to do. I was going to target the evil energy and then the emperor and see which one of those took, but... I think it's the emperor, now that I think about it. What's the emperor? Brian already tried Eldritch Blasting the Mist, and nothing happened. I already lightning shotted the emperor since he has become more corporeal and it went right through. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I think what Tokus was saying a minute ago actually could be true. We have the... If we get rid of the artifacts, then does that stop the ritual... And not only if we can we take the them fire. out of the room, but we can cast it into the fire because there's <laughs> lava right outside the door. Dude. I mean. Yes, that's it. It's Mount Doom. We're in Mount Doom. Grab the artifacts <laughs> and let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, we could destroy, let's see. So there's the throne. That's going to be hard to move. <laughs> True. The scepter <laughs> might be nice if we need to fight him anyway. Why don't we try to melt the crown? Tokus, you're being corrupted by the ring of power. You can't, <laughs> no, you can't I just, use I it to the destroy scepter. the evil because the evil's inside <laughs> it, dude. Classic mistake. Boromir made this mistake. But how are we going to destroy the throne as well? Thanos used the stones to destroy the stones. Come on. <laughs> yeah, come but on. But how Let's... will we also destroy the throne? I can. I understand we could move the crown into interdimensional space and try to like teleport it away and see if that does something. The crown and the scepter, we cast them into the fire like immediately. Right. And then see if that breaks the ritual. I mean... <laughs> Uh, that that's fine, but we that's a lot of movement. That's a lot of actions. And but Shabbos hasted. I like the idea of just trying the satch on the crown. Is it worth all those actions to save the world, Tokus? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Of Might course, be too, many yeah, too many actions. Too many actions. I have to use too many spell slots, guys. I don't know, guys. That's a lot of running. I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I've been a lot. We've done a lot of fighting today. Well, I don't think I'm crazy easy to suggest moving the crown away if that doesn't work then we melt the scepter if that doesn't work we rip the throne and carry the throne <laughs> yeah and drop it into the f- i just i just don't think that's how thane designed this sorry to break immersion for a moment i don't think he expected us to rip the throne out of the ground and also get rid of that. What can we do besides hitting it? The, well, well, yeah, what, we can go after the artifacts. I agree. Right. And we can we can try that on my next turn. I'm, I'm right next to the artifacts. I could try to move or destroy, tamper with them. There's no or. There is simply destroy. I mean, Tokus is really <laughs> strong. I could just smash the throne or try to. We have to cast it into the fire, Tokus, don't you see? There's no other way. I know you're trying to preserve these powerful magical artifacts for your own purposes. No, nope, no, nope, not not trying to. Just w- trying to think of the most action efficient way to do it before the ritual's finished. So grab I, them I, I off the throne and throw them across the room to me. I have double movement speed. I will run them out and cast them into the fire. 
give me the, the crown and give me the scepter and I will do it. Don't artifacts, like, even theoretically survive a lava bath? There's only one way to find out. Just because that was true in Lord of the Rings doesn't mean it's true in D&D. No, it does. It does mean that. It's just science. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, artifacts are generally only destroyed by whatever one specific means can destroy that exact artifact. Yeah. Mm. Like an athlete waiting on the line for a relay race to be past the baton, I will wait at the door with an action to move as fast as I can once I am given the crown and the scepter. I mean, my turn is over. <laughs> my, yeah. I have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you want to move the healing spirit? Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah, it. Bonus action, that healing my spirit. My turn is not <laughs> over. <laughs> my turn is no longer over. I rescind that ending of my turn. <laughs> I move the healing spirit over to Alendria, and then I end my turn. Okay. And heal her. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's her turn. Come on. Big money, big money. A four. All right. She gets back up. Alendria. Hey. Welcome back. She has been up and down too many times to have any idea what's going on. <laughs> she is yeah. just going to take the dodge action where she is. <laughs> Took us. Okay, there's so many items that we're hoping I can interact with, and I don't have action search. So let me let me get this straight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move over to the throne. Should I actually do something like hand the vamp? Just put them into the satchel, and I will run. Oh yeah, dude. I can I oh, can yeah, I just dude. run for my turn? Tokus, put them into the satchel, and then I just take off running. Uh, the scepter's not going <laughs> to fit, I don't think. The scepter? Really? No, but the crown would. What's the size on that satchel? Let me look that up. That's important. The crown surely should fit. Yeah, we've put the crown into the satchel before. Yeah. I think we've put it in there before, yeah. But the scepter wouldn't fit because there's an actual, like, space, essentially. It's not just does it fit through the opening. It's like, right. it's only so long. Can it physically exist yeah. in the, the satchel before it zaps into mm-hmm. extra-dimensional space? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the satchel is only 18 inches wide, and the scepter is about three feet long. Oh, wow. Okay, it's a long scepter. All right. Could I use my action to get out the interdimensional satch, grab the... Well, that seems like an item interaction, doesn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm seeing if I can point out to Elendria about the sword at least? Could I tell her about the sword? Because this sounds like an item interaction, what I'm doing with the crown. Sure. You can tell her about the sword. Talking's a free action. Yeah. Okay. Elendria, listen. Shirkoth has this really super cool sword. It'll heal you and stuff. Highly recommend. <laughs> Just stab it into the zombie. May- maybe it has like a rune word, you know, but you're, you're smart. You'll figure it out. Yeah, gain some life. Try to do that. And then uh, I will stuff the crown into the satchel and speak the command word. Okay. So you got the crown stowed away. Shaba, did you still want to run for your turn? Given that the scepter doesn't fit, do I want to take just the crown or do I want to wait for the scepter or say, bring the scepter? I have to assume that breaking the trilogy by even destroying one of them would be good, right? Like that that should... Yeah, yeah, and if we discover that the lava doesn't destroy the artifacts, which I don't know how we would, the only way that we're going to know that the lava worked is if the ritual seems to slow or stop. Right. Mm-hmm. From the crown melting. I, I like... I love this idea, Jay. I think from an action economy perspective, if we're hoping to do this soon, I feel like let's melt the crown, see if it does anything. Yeah, see if like there's like a reaction or something. I'm letting go of the scepter. If we feel like we need to melt that too, that's fine. But if there's a horde of zombies, hey, scepter might be helpful. Yeah. But didn't they already just tell us that nothing can destroy an artifact except the thing that originally made it? They have a specific way that they need to be destroyed. But it can't hurt to try. All right. Right? Yeah. Yep. This would have been my action, though, right, Thane? Like, I'm doing a lot. I'm not just, like, a simple item interaction. Like, I'm picking it up. I'm putting it in a bag. I'm speaking a command word. Like, is this my interaction or is it more? I think that's your turn. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fine. Uh, I will move. Can I move the hex to the emperor even though he's not fully formed? Sure. Okay. I'll move the hex to him. It seems like he can be touched by magic, just not damaged, maybe. I don't know. So as soon as the satchel's in the bag, I take off running and I use my double move, my action to... As soon as the satchel's in the bag, as the crown's in the satchel. As soon as the crown is in the satchel, (laughs) I take off running. (laughs) The crachel's in the sound. As soon as the creep is in the weepada, I take (laughs) off running. In fairness, I think this is brilliant, right? Because, like, conveniently, there's a ton of lava like Mm -hmm. nearish where we're (laughs) fighting. So that's not bad thinking to think that maybe we're supposed to use the lava some way. And this is like more like a puzzle fight now, less like a 
a real, a normal encounter anymore. I like it. I'm saying, I'm Could saying, be. I like it. It's Good thinking, try. Jay. Yeah, I think we try it. I think it's the best thing we have to go on. Yeah. Yeah. So if we throw the artifacts into the lava and they don't get destroyed, then anybody is welcome to go down there and try to get them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were hoping to get rid of the artifacts at some point anyway. Right. Maybe we shouldn't have given the crown to the king, you know? Maybe we should have tried something like this, like cast it into another plane. Remember that strategy? Yeah. I don't know. Who's to say whether we were right or wrong? So the cultists close in a little bit more. Captain Clapton takes a grazing hit. He's very wounded, but still standing. And it's Azo's turn. All right. Um... Now what do I do? Could you slow the battle down for us? Uh, potentially, I could. There's zombies, though. Are they not affected by something like hypnotic? Yeah, that's what I was just trying to look at. Good quest. You could prolong yourself with, like, a defensive spell or two. It just says, each creature in the area who sees the pattern must make a wisdom saving throw on a fail, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, they become charmed. Are undead. Immune to charm? Charmable. Resistant to charmed. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, how many could you even get in that radius? It's not great, right? Just thinking of options. I, I also just like the idea of you preserving your life total with, like, defensive spells. It's not clear what we're supposed to do, right? Or do I just run around healing people? That wouldn't be bad either. A zombie does have an intelligence score, so it can be charmed. Everything has an intelligence score. Oh, therefore it can be charmed. If it bleeds, we can kill it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Brian? I mean, we're, we're here trying to solve the puzzle. Do we need to hold out until the ritual finishes? Do we still think we can disrupt the ritual by means other than melting one of the artifacts? Yeah, I do think we need to hold out until we can try to melt one of the artifacts. I just, I can't think of what else we could do to stop it. Hope for the best, but expect the worst. So prepare for your turn as though something terrible is about to happen. Uh, Healing people is not a bad idea. Yeah, you could, like, what if you pivot around, or not, don't go around the column. I would say go around the zombie until you can see Elendria, and then couldn't you just shoot a heal over her way? Yeah, that's true. It's like, we're hoping that the sword heals her, but we don't know if, like, Sherikoth, like, knew, like, a command word or something to, like, get it to do its thing. I don't know. It would just be unfortunate for her to go down, wouldn't it be? It would, yeah. I think you still have one heal left on the spirit? Yeah, one on the spirit. It's four? Yep, it's four. Okay. Because I cast it at third level. So, yeah, so maybe maybe do something different. I, I like the idea of trying to lock down the zombies. I like you protecting yourself and not don't worry about us so much like if you keep taking damage every turn that's not good yeah i could hypnotic so that i get like at least three of them yeah and that would maybe let us move freely and then maybe elendria and i can start to think about positioning ourselves around the emperor or something start to make a plan yeah let's try that i'm going to cast hypnotic pattern okay you're casting it in front of the throne which includes three of the zombie cultists and the emperor in the shadow. Mm -hmm. This is like a flash, right? It's not like the AoE stays. It's like a flash. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so we can move freely once you do this. Okay. Okay. And I like it. And and, and Clapton's not in this either. Um, You cast the hypnotic pattern, but it doesn't look like the zombies are affected. Uh, Ah, man. uh, Okay. Maybe the, the evil god or whatever is like literally just... It's the puppet master. Mm. It's controlling all yeah. their steps. And since the god can't be controlled, the zombies can't be either. Brian, that was a really good idea. I just, I, I didn't know off the top of my head if that spell affects zombies or not. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah. See? So you heard you heard it here, listeners. We do not metagame. <laughs> well, <laughs> 95% of the time we do. But occasionally we, we don't. <laughs> yeah, they've listened to 180 plus episodes of us metagaming. I'm pretty sure they know we metagame. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we did not metagame this decision. You can tell our listeners at the beginning of the next campaign that we don't metagame, and then they'll soon see that that's not the case. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's it. We try to minimize it. All right. Um, Captain Clapton, he's just trying to hold his own against the two zombies that are continually attacking him. He's barely still standing, but he's going to be defensive right now. He's going to take the dodge again. Shava? All right, I will finish my move toward the chasm of fire. Um, I'll take one single move action. The crack of doom. Yeah, which will get me to the edge, and I'm going to fling this thing into the crack. I'm going to speak the <laughs> command word to retrieve the crown from the satchel, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punt it 
<laughs> into the crack of doom. <laughs> what watch it like lands on that little ledge on the other side. <laughs> Dang it! No. Dang it. Oh. Why did I do that? <laughs> and then you have to like shoot it. Yeah. Until it <laughs> Keep having to use my boxing lava. glove arrows ding, ding. to just punch it off the other side. <laughs> <laughs> now I will literally toss it up into the air. Watch it tumble out of sight. See, I think the reason that Aslo's okay with us melting the crown is because you already got the passive bonus from it. Exactly. I mean, what do I need that crown for anymore, anyway? Yeah. The crown goes flying, tumbling end over end as it falls down towards the lava. And it strikes the surface and bounces a couple of times before settling. Oh, that's some thick lava. Oh, yeah. That's more realistic lava. Yeah, lava's thick. <laughs> yeah, like in the one ring in. The movie we would never have sunk in down inside. It would have just sat there until it melted. Mm, yeah. Mm. Oh, man. Okay. I'm learning. Uh, anyway, so the crown just kind of sits there, lists a little to the side, and falls in. The waves of lava are more kind of engulfing it somewhat, but it doesn't look like it's actually doing anything to the crown. No! <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> seem to be melting. No. Wow. No. Oh, boy. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 